just like that. No, you you keep going, I'll catch you up. Well, we are gonna be doing some work out in the orchard today. Stuff's starting to finally pick up. I'm gonna be spreading some nutrients on some areas that just kind of suck. Skylar is gonna be ahead of me. Oh, uh, maybe maybe not everyone. It looks like everyone has this problem, but we have, I don't know if our nuts are just too big or what, but we have trees fall over. Yeah, I think our, our nuts are just so huge, it just really makes them sag and then they start leaning and... So I'll pull them out with the ranger. Um, we have the skid steer with the claw that is nice, but especially in the young orchard, the, the nuts are just hanging so low that it's hard to get the skid steer in there. So I'll typically go in, grab the tree and drag it out the ranger to the end of the row and then I'll use the skid steer to haul it to the burn pile. Check out this sweet box that he made for the for the rig, his little utility box. It's kind of the first time I've ever built something like this, so it has a lid. I don't really have much in here yet. I need to make a Harbor Freight run and always a good choice. Yeah, get all the tools that I need. And then also has this pull-out drawer. So I want something kind of small, low. That way I don't have to worry about branches hitting it and so talk about talent, right? I mean, he just bought sheets of aluminum, did all the cutting, bending, TIG welding, everything. Yeah, it's definitely a learning experience. Uh, not a very good welder, but I'm getting there. He's he's a pretty good welder. He just he's just being he's just being humble. This one is nice to have a, which I know not everyone has these, a ninja farmer. Which I don't even think the ninja farmer can handle this one, nope. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I think, the, I think the ninja farmer can do this for sure. Forgot to call him up though. And just like that, the ninja farmer came through. Yeah, yeah. Every farm should have a ninja farmer. So. They, they come in handy. Sure, yeah. glad we have one. Figure the trees get definitely more of a thing. Just like that. No, you you keep going, I'll catch you up. Just drop it off here. This is our fence post tree grabber thingy. It's like an alligator. Ah! Nuts to the face.
Look, Mom, I got something for you. Did you lose a tree? Uh, yeah, we've actually we've lost that. That's just a whole tree, but there's a lot of the scaffolds, you know, the Aldrich scaffolds. That tree just fall over. Fell over. It was in the young orchard in that spot where they always fall over. Oh. So picking them up. We gotta move that because I'm gonna go and spread that. We have that nutrient stuff oh, over yeah. there. A lot of nuts, huh? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. They're, it's a problem you want to have. Yeah, it's a bumper crop. But... What up, dude? Whoa, man, look at that. Noggin. You got bump heads. Boom. There you go. Is that a tractor? He's a one syllable guy. Yep. <laughs> tra, tra, tra. Which I think there's a slight difference between truck and tractor. Oh. It just shortens the tractor. It's usually track. Uh -huh. and, and truck is a very like truck. Well, while Skylar is getting all that finished up, I'm going to start spreading that those nutrients out. Well, here's the little rig. So it's working pretty good. It's doing its job. We kind of felt like idiots because when we were trying to put the chain on, there's a tensioner pulley. Like trying to figure out how it's how it's this is working. So we had to call our uh, crop advisor, the one who lent us this mechanical sprayer. He's like, "Oh, you got to put it on top of the chain, and it pulls it down." Duh. One of those moments. Well, this is what happens when you've got one spot of your orchard that doesn't drain. All the rest of our orchard drains great. We don't have any problem with pooling up water, not being able to drain, except for this one spot. I thought I was going around it enough, and uh, not so much. Four wheel drive, rear diff lock, and I'm stuck. <laughs> well, looks like I'm gonna have to make that phone call. A little bit of an embarrassing phone call, but. We've all been there. Hey, uh, I'm stuck. You're stuck? Yeah, there's that yeah. one spot. That one spot? That one spot. And all I'm right. in four wheel drive, diff lock, and it's stuck. So, okay. probably I'll need a second. either skid steer. I don't know if the, the cart will be able to do it, but we could try it. Yeah, we'll try it. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Yeah, he knew exactly what spot. Well, if you say you got stuck in the orchard, there's only one, literally only one spot you can get stuck. And I even came through this, I even came through this winter and I ripped through this. We have a two foot ripper, ripped through it thinking that'll get through anything that's there. And obviously, obviously not. Oh yeah, causing a nice little rut. Harvesters will definitely be going around this spot this year. Well, this will really put this thing to the test. We've actually used it quite a few times, pulling stuff out of the mud and it's done great. So we'll see how it goes. This is kind of a heavy load because of the tank. So I'll be uh, interested to see how well it does. Interesting, we're, we're gonna keep this a little bit further forward and more dry stuff. Like literally, it's only like a 40 foot section that's wet and then it clears up and it's dry. So we're gonna keep that in the dry spot and see if it'll be able to do it.
was a bit of an adventure. Whew. Yeah. Glad Skylar's alive. That's the spot. In fact, after he got me pulled out, he started to leave. I went to take off. It just started to bury again. So we pulled it like all the way to the end of the row. And then you come over here and the ground's just dry. Like dry, like it needs water. Ridiculous. So this is what I was telling you about. This is one of those moments where like, okay, that was self-explanatory. So to engage this thing, cause it's all mechanical, put the chain on the sprocket. Okay, so it's on. So I was like, all right, so this needs to come up. It's the tensioner, all right. How do you keep it there? Cause I was like, the spring keeps wanting to pull it back down. It's like, and my brother-in-law Sky were like, oh. so I ended up, it's like, oh, I'm gonna call my crop advisor. And he's like, oh, you put it on top. It's like, oh my gosh, of course you do. Duh. Just like this. Now it's got tension cause it's pulling down. What an idiot. Well, we just finished up. We're gonna take this sprayer, put it back up to the pump station, let the guys know we're done. Skyler's still out there pulling tree branches out. We'll go check out what he's doing. Well, they're starting to pile up. Hate seeing this, but no, you got a heavy crop. Gosh, I hate that. That's a wrap for today. Thank you for uh, following along with us. Just got done spraying. Skyler just got done picking up some branches. Yeah. How many did you end up having to do? Branches wise, probably 10. 10, all right. And then trees? Trees, I think there's maybe two full trees that fell over. Okay, that's not too bad. No. Yeah, that's not too bad. When you're talking 142 trees per acre, I think 17,000 trees or something like that. Yeah. That's, that's not too bad, so. Well, thanks for joining along with us, fellow ag nerds, and we'll see you later.